Today we will go over the perplexity um, uh, search engine choice under uh, in the ARC browser. Um, so if you're not familiar with, with ARC, uh, it's a relatively new browser by the browser company. Um, and they really are trying to, you know, um, really change the way we, we browse the internet, but I'm not going to get too much into the ARC browser. Um, but the fact that they are using Perplexity, which is um, um, a generative AI platform um, as their as a search option, that's a pretty, um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And it's kind of, you know, no one else is really doing anything like that. So it's a good, two really innovative companies that are coming together for um, a pretty a pretty interesting thing and well and it'll be interesting to see how it evolves um but anyways i'm just going to show you how to get that started so essentially when you go into um your settings under the arc browser you can just change your uh search engine um so i got mindset of perplexity i've i've been playing around with perplexity for um quite some time now and specifically with the um, with perplexity on the arc browser um, and it's been interesting to think about like okay well what is it what is it to use a generative AI um, tool like a ch prompt for search um, and you know typically when I when I had perplex perplexity originally on, on the phone app I would just um, I used it really just for asking questions, and I like that it gave me citations and sources. Um, so, you know, let's let's try something. Um, okay, one of the things I've been trying to do um, is actually is learning how to code through these generative AI tools. So let's let's see what perplexity would say if I ask. You know, if I ask. Uh, Teach me how to code. Okay, so you see, like, you kind of see how it loads. It's got the answer loading down. Um, yeah, it's kind of nice. It gives me, um, gives me, um, like, a, you know, guideline, a step-by-step -step guideline. Choose your language, set up your environment learn the basics, practice coding, um, you know, and it just tells me it takes the task that takes time and dedication with persistence, sure. Um, so I can edit the query or I can keep asking follow-up questions or I can, um, you know, I can kind of click on one of these, um, these options that I'll just, uh, that kind of essentially just creates a, a creates a thread of prompts. Um, and if you notice, when I clicked on the option, now I've got sources up here. And so now I actually have, um, now it's operating, you can kind of see the search side of it where um, it's giving me options to choose from. So, you know, I really think about this from an SEO implication um, because all of a sudden, like, you're only showing me four sites versus Google that shows me, you know, whatever thousands, right? Um, so, I, you know, it makes me ask the question of like, why are, why are these the ones that are chosen? Why is it, why to determine these are the best? But um, either way, I've typically found they're pretty, you know, pretty good results. And you can kind of see the um, sub notes, the, foot, the footnotes, I guess, that I can just click on that would take me to these links um, what happens if I hit search image right so it kind of populates the images right here um, I can view more um, I guess you could view more than so if I wanted to see yeah, it gives me up to five sources right it's not it's not a whole lot but um, what happens if I do view more images so that's something but yeah it's like it's very selective on the information it shows. So you can you can see like something like learning to code and that's an interesting, you know, like I do think generative AI is a pretty good place to ask questions like that too. Um, 
but if I was trying to find the best restaurants, um, you know, in my city, I, I wouldn't use, I think I actually had to do that recently. The perplexity was not great for that because I like to cross reference, you know, different sites and what they're saying and what they're, um, and kind of create my own judgment based off of that. Um, whereas perplexity is doing all that work for me and it's not, you know, it's not really trustworthy um, in that way because I don't even know if it, you know, is it finding restaurants that opened a couple of months ago? How does it know, um, how does it have enough in, enough information to say this one that opened a couple of months ago is better than the rest or not, you know? So there's limitations of the type of judgment I trust it with. Um, but I do, I love this option of just being able to, so, so typically when I end up in situations like that, um, I end up just using another browser for Google and then I use perplexity as my default. Um, though I would love the option to just toggle search engines right here because yeah, see like search, oh, here we go. Search settings. Um, so I guess I could change Yeah, Like that's like three or four clicks for me to actually change my, my search engine. Um, but it would be great if I can just toggle between two. Like, okay, you got perplexity here. You can just switch or switch back to Google because generative AI isn't search, you know, in the, in the, in what it is today. And it is, it does have its shortcomings. Um, but it is, um, it's still, it's a lot of fun to play with. Like I haven't, I've never signed into my um, perplexity on the desktop, but you know, I guess if I did that, I'd have a history of all the, all the places I've searched, um, or all the uh, prompts I've, uh, queried, I guess. Um, but anyways, uh, that's, that's all I have for today. I just wanted to go over, um, the perplexity app and, in the the arc um, integration of perplexity app so hope you enjoy hope you learned something um love to hear in the comments how your experience the perplexity is